right, before I throw it up here, I'm just going to let you know. Weapon has been safety checked. There's no magazine in. All right, YouTube, everybody else, empty, safe rifle. Before I start fiddling about with all these things, I'm using a Sunway Photo Tripod here. And it allows me to adjust the tension on the NATO piece here, the Picatinny piece. And so I can get it tight enough to hold that rifle in there, which I really like. And clamp it in. The advantage of, uh, kind of changing my laser in this setup is if I'm on a bench where I'm at right now, uh, I'll usually have snow drifts in the way. There's not too much snow right now, but I'll usually have snow drifts in the way, something else to have to deal with. And if I do it from a standing position, first of all, you can see it. And second of all, I can shine this right on my target and using my tripod, I can get it leveled out and tighten the tension right, right there. I'm right on my target perfectly. And now to adjust my laser, I'm going to turn on my laser, just right up front here. And I can see where I'm at on my target. And it looks like I look at my reticle here. My reticle is exactly on the head and it looks like I'm about five inches to the right five inches to the right of my target. So what I'm gonna do is take my little provided Allen wrench and I'm gonna go to the windage. Luckily, I don't have to deal with the elevation here at all. I am zeroing this particular one at 50 yards, which is probably further than most people should. I think most people would be very content with a 25 or a 15 yard zero even for really close stuff. I mean, I guess basically, you know, house distances from room to room, if that's the way you're thinking about things for me. Uh, 50 yards is just fine, and I kind of know what these zero offsets are closer up. It's a little bit similar to an optic, although the height over bore of this particular laser is very, very low. You can't even see it quite. I'm realizing from the camera angle, you can't quite see this laser because I have uh, an Olight flashlight in the way. This is bigger than the laser is. The laser is rather low profile. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sighted in and then start taking a few shots. It was on my 18 inch and it's just slightly off um, from where my 18 inch was on this 10 and a half inch. And so not too much of a correction, pretty easy to just bump it with this little Allen key they provide, get it over and we'll start throwing some lead. All right, before my camera battery dies from the cold, it is 15 degrees out here, light's still holding up. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you a little bit. <clears throat> I'll kill the light here. I'll show you a little bit of shining around down there. Hopefully you'll be able to see it on the white target. It is just ahead, it's only 50 yards away, so I think you'll be able to see it. If not, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get an idea of what kind of reflective value that has uh, being a green laser on a white target. Here, you know, it's a shiny, a shiny surface. It should give us some kind of feedback there. So I'll go ahead and kill the light here. Perfect. All right, so there's the target. And turn that off. There is the laser. You can see that. That's, that's, uh, let's see. Out there, that's about 100 yards. If you can see that out there, it's about 100 yards. To me, it's extremely visible. I'm not having trouble seeing that at all, guys. I mean, at hundreds of yards. I go out a ways at hundreds of yards. But I'll bring it in a little closer. So here's about 10 yards in front of me. Right here, really big bead. There's about 30. And right here, there's my target. And I can see it very, very clearly. There at 50 yards, not hard for me to see at all. Now that I've zeroed it, I'm going to go ahead and throw a few rounds and just confirm that it is actually zeroed to my reticle at 50 yards. And actually, I'm going to use the uh, strobe function. If you press it twice, if you press the button twice, it will strobe for you, which it's uh, doing for me right now. If you can see that, that's what the strobe looks like.
we go. There's a lot of smoke coming out from that Tula ammunition. right on all right so i'm gonna have more fun with this i've already had fun messing around with an 18 inch and it did really well on that 18 inch ar but here on this 10 and a half inch it's pretty at home as well it's gonna get really cold here i'm gonna keep shooting for the night until i run out of ammo but the temperature will drop it'll kill my camera so i better record some of this now i'm gonna tell you that this uh, votatu if i pronounce that properly laser uh, it surprised me it did really well in the last night sessions you know it gets real cold here in minnesota and the cold kills batteries fast i don't care what it is what type of optic or what batteries it's running on it just kills stuff fast and i'm really happy to see that this has not died and it has not dimmed in uh, the last two sessions i've been using that are quite cold it's actually as far as i can tell it's just as bright as the first time i turned it on as i was throwing it out there at 100 200 and 300 yards away i can see the beam really really clearly definitely uh, illuminates well it lights up well as i was going between different surfaces something that's kind of neat if you've never used a laser before is it gives you lots of feedback about the surface you're on if you're on a metal surface kind of spreads the light out it, it reflects a little bit it gives you some depth perception of how far something is and it illuminates off that steel target and then at uh, hundreds of yards you can see that beam going out there and touching on tree tips and stuff it's, it's just plenty bright i think the size of the emitter is appropriate especially because i think most people are going to be running this at closer distances i'm zeroing it at 50 yards to be honest with you i probably would be really okay with 25 yards 50 yards it's just because that's a distance i tend to shoot a lot but if you're looking at this as a little bit more of a around the house kind of thing you know from room to room distances you're looking at really close distances and your zero offset should reflect that you should zero this to the distance you think you're going to need to use that laser or that you will use that laser don't just do it you know range uh, distances because that's when you plank I, I think if you're planning to use this especially defensively you should strategize and zero it for those distances so that being said um, i think it's pretty rugged i think the design is good it, it actually has a really nice texture on that button it's really easy to tell when you're indenting it, when you're pressing it, it's kind of got a, like a gummy texture to it. Seems uh, robust. The design seems robust. And when I'm single clicking for just on or uh, temporary mode, or if I'm double clicking it to go into strobe function, it was very easy to tell it's tactile on the button. That's what you want. You don't want buttons that don't give you enough feedback and are kind of gummy and it makes you unsure of what's about to happen. This one is very predictable. And honestly, that's what it has to be, but it did it well. On the top of it here, if you can see, that's where the charging, magnetic charging um, port is, if you want to call it that. That right there works really well. It's very, very cool. It's probably familiar to some of you who have had other rechargeable types of lights and things like that. That right there, it's just a little bit smaller of a design. Recharges pretty quick, actually. After the first shoot that I had, um, like I said, the, the batteries lasted really well, and I don't see any degradation of the ability to hold a charge it seems like it can hold it really well and holds a long time I, I still charged it because i used it but i don't actually know if i needed to charge it because it it just seemed just as bright as when i had first brought it out and like i said earlier the cold kills kills stuff here in minnesota when it's 10 15 degrees and you're out for a few hours most rechargeable things just die the cold when you use them especially in the cold it does diminish the battery pretty quickly this doesn't seem to be a problem at all. The housing is good. The emitter is good. The way that it connects, you know, it's not a QD function. It is two um, torques, if I can show you that right there, or two Allens, rather. So two Allens retain this to the rail. I, I opted to go for that 12 o'clock position just because of the way that I have this set up. It doesn't inhibit the way I see anything, and I've already got a flashlight mounted on the side there. So I don't want a whole bunch of crazy gear hanging off the other side. And making it too wide of a package so i decided to go for the 12 o'clock position worked really well you could just as well throw this on certain types of pistols or ars on the six o'clock position or a three o'clock or a nine o'clock or whatever else it just was more natural for me since i'm already running a light pad on here with momentary and then um, the consistent it's kind of similar running this pad up here and just the way that my thumb if i can show you real here real quick the way that my thumb can slide up into those two positions 
it's real consistent for me. Let me back over a little bit. Real consistent for me just to go between those two. And I could even put them closer together probably without fear of negligent light discharge. I like it. I think it's a good quality light. The uh, way that you change your zero or you set your zero and move that laser around, it is sensitive. And so you're probably going to be um, real real careful when you're setting the zero. If you give it a good crank, it's gonna go way far away. It's very easy to move is what I'm saying. And so light, delicate um, clicks, you know, if, if you've ever zeroed an optic, you know, some of them have smooth clicks and they move really fast. Some of them have hard clicks and they move slow. I would just say that this is uh, very quick to move and adjust the laser. And so you probably wanna do what I did is either set it in a tripod or a mount or um, a dead rest of some sort that will hold the rifle for you on a target that you can see maybe at dusk or sundown and then adjust from there and like i said closer distances are probably better set it up to your red dot or your reticle and there's a really cool advantage if you're running red then the green pops out really nicely on top of that there's a whole bunch of other options this is not the only one you can check them out on amazon that's where i first heard of them in the first place and uh, it's held up to the recoil the cold it's functioned well, it's very visible. I can see it even when I have my um, 1500 lumens, I'm gonna show you, 1500 lumen light on, I can still see it on my target very well. And that's with a 1X guys, no illumination. So I think they knocked it out of the park. I think it's very, very good. And it's an impressive price point. So it's probably gonna be good for a lot of people's budgets out there. You're not looking to spend a huge amount of money. You're not gonna buy a D-ball. I know I'm not going to. So instead, maybe something like this is more so in your budget and up your alley. I think it works well. I'm gonna keep it on this rifle, having a good time with it. Thanks guys, like, share, and subscribe.